Hi, everybody, and welcome to week one of our uh, art class, courtesy of Rethink Ireland and Spinal Injuries Ireland. And you've received your art packs. So I'm uh, delighted that we've so many online tonight. So a little bit about this art journey. Um, before COVID, Spinal Injuries Ireland supported service users interested in art classes in the Northeast. And these classes were popular, but limited to in-person hybrids or in-person sessions. And since COVID, we've seen the benefit of having, I think, a hybrid approach that allows people flexibility to interact remotely and at their convenience. Living with a spinal cord injury, we know the benefit of this flexible approach, as we can often have some good days and some bad days. But thank you for signing up and welcome. The aim of the next six weeks is to be a fun, creative introduction to art making. And we hope that you enjoy discovering new art skills. Starting anything new can be a chore. So to make starting easier, we have put together a kit containing all the materials that we need. And it's kindly supported by Rethink Ireland's Social Innovation Fund for Disability Participation. So let's have a look at your art kit. I'm sure you had an old rummage in there before tonight. Your hardest task could be keeping it preserved from other people <laughs> because there's lots of bits and bobs in it. So we have an A3 plastic folder, a journal, a brush pack with the orange handles. And those brushes are made with synthetic hair, Taclon, because I don't like the idea of a poor animal getting shaved for our artistic pursuits. Uh, we have a pot of PVA glue, which uh, is just a water-braced glue, and that can be thinned down as well, and it can be used as a varnish. Uh, we have a pot of gesso, and gesso is a primer. We'll be looking at that this evening. I have uh, my gesso here in a tube because I, I go through it like butter. Um, we have 24 water-soluble pencils, which means they can operate like a what pe colouring pencil and then with water applied can be turned into paint. So it's a good transition for those a little bit of feared of messing about with paint. The little square thing, that's the sponge brush. That's good. We'll be using that this evening. A Sharpie pen, which is just like a posh permanent marker with a good nib on it. And a pack of 12 oil pastels. And they're just like crayons, except they're just a little bit more generous and they blend a bit easier. A 4B pencil, an eraser and a set of watercolour paint. Probably not the ones you see there. You've got the Reeves um, watercolour paint kit. And also a little note, an envelope of collage papers, which get your hands on that. We'll be using it this evening. And um, uh, these I just collect up uh, over the course of the year and I put together these piles. But you'll probably start now that you've kind of embarked on this journey. You'll be keeping your eye out for anything uh, that's of interest in the paper world, whether it's a nice napkin or a, a bit from the Sunday paper. Uh, I have my cup of tea. Biggest threat is that the brush goes into it. So I'll keep mm -hmm. it over to the left hand side. Um, I I've, I've drank them anyway, even if the brush goes in, I tend to use uh, non-toxic paint. So you can always add to the bits in your art pack, things around the house. There's always a drawer lurking in everyone's house that has a few bits and bobs in it. And I know because all your mugs were produced with those little bits and bobs that you already had in the house. And other useful items are an old cloth, a kitchen roll, your jam jar or container for water. I like to mix on a plate. I don't like the little pallets with the holes because I find them too fiddly. Any markers, gel pens or brushes, scissors or a prit stick. And I keep everything in a basket just so if I want to work in the kitchen, I'm taking one thing and I'm and everything stays together. Um, I'm, I have a fine collection of aprons and I uh, tend to cover myself up with that because everything I own has paint on it. And um, you can really add anything you like into your art kit. And I find access to a hairdryer very handy because it will speed things up um, if you're waiting for them to dry. Now, finding the pace that suits you, I think 
pacing is one of the biggest challenges we have living with a spinal cord injury. Some days you kill yourself because you just want to get it done and then you'll be suffering the next day. So you can choose the pace that suits you. You can just choose to watch today or watch and work along or both and work away again in your own time. So you'll have access to all today's content so you can revisit it and dip back in at any time. So the directions are intended to lay, be laid out in a step-by-step -step approach and you don't need to copy these instructions at all to get it right because I believe there's no right or wrong approach to art. It's more important to enjoy the making and discover your creative voice. So we we include this uh, list of slides on the G drive. If you don't want to watch the video, you might just want to read the words again and that link will be accessible uh, to you. What is an art journal? Well, it can be anything. A book of ideas, a place to keep things, a list, a dream diary, an account, a friend, a tool, on and on and on, a doodling pad. It can be whatever you want it to be. But it's a relaxed place with no rules to make art. And we found in our pilot exercises that I get as inspired and informed by the other participants sharing their work with me as you might from reading these slides. So it's a very collaborative approach to making artwork. Why an art journal? Well, I've kept an art journal since 1987. And I suppose I, I liked it because it felt private. When I was finished doing a little bit of drawing, I could close the cover. It isn't like the pressure of a finished piece sitting on an easel. So I'm in the habit of doing a little bit every day. No pressure, just fun. And when I was in the National Rehabilitation Hospital, I journaled every day because I didn't know what else to do with myself. And it was a place to put everything. And I, it's important to me the 10 years on from my time in the rehabilitation hospital that I'm here. And it's very exciting for me that I can share this method of working with you. So we're going to use ours as a handy place to keep our artwork and develop, develop our individual artistic ex expressions. And diaries are most intimate objects people possess, and they contain all the elements that make up the human experience without holding back in any way, since they're only meant for the eyes of the author. And each person has their own unique approach to keeping a diary and tracking the experiences of their daily lives and the development of their personal processes. And when artists make diaries, they tend to be filled not only with intimate personal thoughts and fascinating details of their artistic progress, but also with stunning little examples of their art in the form of sketches and studies. In some cases, and I believe the diary is really an artwork in and of itself. So here's some pages of art journals from other artists. On the, the top uh, left-hand side is uh, pages by Janice Slowery. It's compositions done with collage, handwritten notes, little diagrams, bits from magazines. There on the right-hand side, uh, Frida Kahlo, her uh, diary and art journal pages, an artist from South America. And then Leonardo da Vinci, where he would plan things out, a lot of problem solving. And I found Leonardo da Vinci's diaries much more inspiring than his finished pieces because I could see his attempts to draw a horse and the horse had six legs. And I was like, well, he didn't even bother rubbing them out. And it sort of gave me that sort of, Great. Embrace the uh, embrace the errors and move on to the next page. So I think you can learn a lot from looking at other artists' notebooks. So let's start. Gesso. It's in a little tub. It's like garlic sauce there in um, in your pack. So what is gesso? Well, gesso is a primer, something that can prepare the surface. And it makes the page more durable for our journaling. So I'm just going to split my page diagonally with my pencil. And I'm going to do the top half with some gesso and the bottom half we'll do with some collage. So I'm just going to I'm going to work across two pages today. But you can choose any page at all in your diary. And I'm going to work from the one corner to the other. I'm going to throw in a few lines 
just to divide up the page. Maybe even big mountains, something to... I might do it in with a pen so you might see it a bit easier. It's not in that one. Yeah, I'll I'll do it with this pen. So I'm just going to divide my page up with a few lines, just so that I can see a top half and a bottom half. So I'm just dividing it diagonally, and I'm going to get out my gesso and my sponge brush. I'm going to add a little bit on the top. And you can work away as I'm yapping through these slides. So gesso is a primer. And how it makes the page more durable, I will explain. Sometimes because of the weight of the paper, it can only take so much abuse. The last type of paper that you really want to work on is photocopy paper because there's no weight in it at all. It's only good for printing out things from your home printer and maybe only for collaging. So it wouldn't take, if you tried to paint on a piece of photocopy paper, it would buckle and it would be all lumpy and bumpy. So no good at all. You'd nearly be better off painting on a cornflakes box more mm -hmm. than you would uh, photocopy paper. And I won't lie, uh, when I was growing up, child of the 80s, those cornflakes boxes were gold dust. <laughs> um, I get in trouble for ripping a, a, the package apart before the thing was even finished. So I use me, you're probably saying, why that clothes peg? I use the clothes peg to hold the corner of the page um, if it's uh, lifting up a little bit. So I've put a bit of a thick layer of my gesso on there and you don't have to have it too smooth but because you may want you could use it for texture so gesso can be used for effects distressing and texture you can apply it in thin coats with the sponge brush to give you a flat finish and it'll dry quickly applying it with a brush in thicker coats can give you a textured finish and but this would need to dry overnight also if you bought a canvas Let's say it was a bit of a cheap canvas. A coat of gesso will smooth out that surface and mm. it will make it a lot more durable. A lot of the portrait paint things you might see in the gallery where it nearly need, looks like porcelain on a face. There's more likely eight or nine or ten coats of gesso on that canvas so that the paint will sink into it. And gesso is a combination of binder and chalk. So it has a, a bit like chalk paint, which became quite fashionable in the last couple of years. It has a matte finish. This is acrylic gesso, so it wouldn't be as matte as the one that's made with the uh, rabbit skin glue, which is not a pleasant, um, not a pleasant product at all. So we're going to work on this page in our journal and you can work along or you can watch and work later. So I have my jar of water, my sponge brush, a packet of papers and gesso. And we'll also maybe use some watercolour paint and PVA uh, later. So in the diagram there, figure one, I shaded some of the 4B pencil on top so that you could see the texture of the gesso after it dried. If, it, if I didn't put the graphite on it, it would be harder to see. But if you had a thick enough coat of gesso, you could scratch in into it, even with the end of a brush. And you could create patterns or designs in, in the wet gesso and it would dry that way. But if it was very thick, you would need to let it dry overnight. But it's definitely something I would um, recommend experimenting with, especially if you're attracted to te heavily textured work that nearly looks like relief work. So you can also apply gesso over a collaged section of paper, and this can distress or age the page. You can mix the gesso with a little bit of water. You could thin it down. And that would give you a hazy look or nearly like a vintage look on your page. Layer of gesso could be thin, so you could use this technique to desaturate or tone down a very colourful page. And a lot of this lingo 
will make more sense the more we work together with art processes. Now, I think one of the, the, the great things Jesso can do is it can be you made to use uh, corrections, <laughs> like the artist's tipex. And it's easier to wipe watercolor paint off a page that has already been primed with gesso in your journal. Because if you were to work watercolor paint onto the page without any gesso, you might find it difficult and the page might ball up or um, rip if you added too much water to it. Watercolor, yeah, it's hard to remove and rubbing it too much can cause the paper to ball, resulting in a torn page. Gesso can also be used like white paint on a dark surface. So if you had black paper or dark paper, you could paint on that. And it can definitely make paper more durable, no balling up. So whether you do this or over the next week, and you don't have to work in your journal in a chronological fashion. You could open a random page and work anywhere. And sometimes that mixes your content up a little bit too, which uh, is a bit of fun. So you could try priming a smooth gesso page uh, using pencil on wet gesso. Um, and that's quite nice because the, the pencil sort of blurs a little bit in there. I'll do a couple of scribble lines in here and it may set in, in um, under my paint. So running the pencil through the wet gesso. Um, you can also, when the panel or the page is dry, you can you can draw and shade on top of it. It's very, very nice. And it takes blending very well. Um, you can scribble into it, let it dry and recoat it with another layer, or you can apply it on a dry collage. And like I mentioned earlier, a hairdryer, magic weapon, whether you're using paint or gesso or even glue, it can uh, speed up the drying time. I'm just going to stick my sponge brush into my water so the gesso won't dry onto it. Collage. Well, the term collage derives from the French term papier collier or découpage used to describe techniques of pasting paper cutouts onto various surfaces. And it was first used as an artist technique in the early 20th century. Collage can also include other media, such as painting and drawing, and contain three-dimensional elements. And I like this quote, collage only allows the opening up of conscious. Have I said that right? Con yeah, <laughs> which is very direct. And it's also a way of looking at what you are consuming all the time. And I think that's very true about how we kind of glance at newspapers now. We might like only get a newspaper once a week, whereas there used to be a newspaper every day in our house. Um, so we're looking at different content. And I love to journal when I'm away on holidays because I can take a small notebook with me and I can doodle and draw into it while everybody sleeps in the morning and I'm still getting up early because I've just had enough of the hotel bed. And I head out to the balcony and I sit and I have my watercolour tin and I pick up things from around the space I'm in. So when we were in Ibiza, I was picking up flyers that advertised bow cruises and I was tearing up the pages, sticking them into my book and one half on the right is watercolour and the other half is the image, which is collaged on. The yellow and pink one there was made up with ripped paper bag and watercolour pencils. And it kind of reminded me, it was a bit more like a hippie kind of pattern. And it, it's a great, I find it a very good way to relax and I can sit down and not overthink what it is I'm going to do. I'll just respond to whatever bits of paper that I found. So I find it uh, very relaxing. Now, in your envelope, everybody has a different selection of stuff. So I'd like you to kind of open up your envelope and just have a look and see what, what's in there. And pick two or three elements that you, you kind of feel interested by or attracted by. There might be a bit of brown paper in there. I love a bit of brown paper. 
might be some magazine bits, text. So you might, depending on, on your logic and what you're interested in, you might be putting these three elements together based on color. You might like the pattern of one. You don't have to have the answers yet. But uh, I'm going to start off with some more neutral things. I have this brown paper bag, a bit of tissue paper. I find responding to different papers uh, very interesting because it sort of challenges you out of your comfort zone a little bit because you, you had no control over what was in that envelope. And you can, you're free to texture it a little bit. Uh, I have a magazine page here, but I'm going to scrumple it up a little bit. Now, you'll either be a cutting person or if you find scissors too hard to um, to operate, you could just tear it. So I'm going to get my tub of glue. And I'm going to start applying a little bit of glue into the lower half of my page. So collage can be built up in layers and shapes can be added on top to create a narrative or story. And in the slide there, I, I think I created a washing line collage and I drew a curved line with the colouring pencil and some rough shapes of clothes from different papers because I was interested in it. And this same method is really great for making little cards. And if you don't have any nice paper or you wanted paper that was maybe purple or whatever, rip a page out of your journal, lash a load of purple shades, whether it's oil pastel colouring pencil or paint on it, let it dry and then treat it like a collage paper. But tonight I've drawn this kind of diagonal line. So I'm going to sort of treat it a bit like a landscape. I'll keep the top part like gesso. Uh, that'll be the sky and that'll be drying while I start my collage. So I'm just going to tear up my paper to create mountain like shapes. And I'm using one piece of paper with a bit of text on it. But again, everyone's is going to be different. So essentially, we're learning to draw by ripping stuff up. And as a fan of punk culture, I find this a uh, very interesting way of making. So I'm just going to tear a few shapes that will sit beside each other a little bit before I start gluing. So I can... Um, work things in sections. And I like the torn edge. It's nice and soft. Um, I can create layers then. But then any of my scrap papers from the shapes that I've torn, I can recycle them somewhere else. I'll just keep them beside me. So a lot of the uh, Dadaist artists would have used collage in their practice. And uh, that was also a response to um, the climate of the time because they were operating during the First and Second World War. And it was a form of protest and there was a shortage of art materials and um, they used whatever they had to hand. I love a bit of brown paper. It kind of reminds me before we had cling film and all these, we'd use the bread paper. Though I was always mildly embarrassed at getting my sandwiches wrapped in the bread paper. <laughs> but now there's like uh, wax paper and stuff. So I suppose we were more eco than we believed back back then. So I suppose that's another segue. It's it's quite a very um, a good way of recycling. Um, uh, an artist um, who's a friend and colleague of mine, he would say that uh, this is as much about our environment and the landscape of our consumerism, the magazines, the flyers that come in as junk mail. I'm always getting ones about uh, um, 
maintenance free plaster on my house. <laughs> yeah, the brown paper is looking nice and then that can uh, take paint as well. So I've enough little bits ripped up. I'm going to start gluing. So I have some PVA glue. And I'm, I'll just scrub a little bit on. You could use your sponge brush or um, you could use the large brush in your pack. Just make sure that you don't let the glue dry on the that because that's a, that's a nice brush. Um, but if there's an old rubbishy brush around the house, you know, the bristly ones that children don't like to use because they're really awful. That would be perfect for glue. Once it isn't shedding too much hair. So a lot of contemporary artists would use collage in their mixed media work. And then uh, they would scan them in digitally and produce items with it. Um, you'd even see it on greetings card designs. But if you're into collage, I think you could just make the card straight up with collage. And you can stick your edges down as well. And a, you can throw a coat of thin glue on top. Once you're happy with the position of your first piece of paper. This one has text. I think it was out of a magazine or something. And that helps push out any air bubbles and make sure that the edges... And because this glue is going to dry clear, it doesn't matter. I'm working around me. Center here. that or fit it in and um one of the artists Matisse as he was getting older his hand mobility changed and his eyesight had changed so he resorted to not painting anymore at the stage of his life he ended up using collage a lot more so it's kind of like painting um by by creating papers and uh, and colours. And one of his most famous collages is called The Snail. And uh, they would use it quite a lot in school to teach children about colour. And uh, it's a charming, charming collage. But for so, you know, it's, it's lovely to see um, fine artists creating alternative methods of making in response to I suppose a changing body. So, And by putting a coat of glue over your stuck down bits, it's kind of like you're varnishing it so you don't have any flappy bits um, and it, it sticks down and it becomes a nice flat surface. Some people like to tear up little pieces and it, like it becomes a mosaic. I might, I might have included... Have I included any um, bark? You know, that papery bark in people's envelopes. You might find some of that. I think I pulled that off silver birch trees. Stuffing, stuffing everybody's pocket with papery bark <laughs> on walk. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that in too because it's a nice, a nice texture. There's a little bit of un unknown. You don't really know what your outcome will be. And that's exciting. So much is of what we do is predetermined. You know, a bit like uh, the menu on our streaming services. We know what we're going to watch already. There's no surprise. Just turning on the TV. <laughs> so I'm going to use a little bit of tissue paper as well. Tissue paper is great because you can actually colour mix with it. And it, sometimes it appears in gift bags. And unless you're keeping that gift paper, it might just go to the green bin. So it's a nice way of, of bringing colour in too. And at this point, if, if bits of paper are heading off or going over your page a little bit. Don't worry, you let them hang over. You can always trim them back afterwards. I'm 
It's a bit like mini wallpapering. But if you get good at this, there's nothing you can't collage. You can buy a lot of wooden blank items, little trays and things like that. And uh, if you get the, the right layer, you could put a little bit of varnish on them. You could buy outdoor varnish, hot varnish. You could varnish over the top and you could use that outside. Or... I have to say, one of the things I like the most is the ripping. <laughs> when you can tear curves into it. Or you could fold edges back on themselves. Because the paper, especially the tissue paper, is a lot lighter. I often find the I don't know if any of you are on Pinterest, but it's a great place to kind of do uh, research for ideas. So even if you had an afternoon to yourself and say, God, I fancy doing some collage, maybe inspired by nature. You could just go onto Pinterest and go nature collage and see what pops up. Now, I restrict myself <laughs> to once a week because it can be a bit of a wormhole and I spend more time looking at stuff than making stuff. That's probably one of the reasons I keep myself off uh, Instagram and places because I just, I get nothing done. So I'm using my brown paper bag and my napkins and everything to start filling in the lower part of my page. I'm painting the glue over the top just to secure it in place and get the shapes right. And you're sort of drawing as you're going really by creating uh, solid forms of color and shape. Now I want to bring some more green. So I'm going back into my paper pack and see if I have any more greenish things. Oh, I found a piece of paper with some green on it. I'm always fascinated, like how we're all sat here doing the same exercise, but everybody's outcomes will be different. Uh, just like everyone's personalities are different and like everybody's mugs were different. They were just great. I should include a, a mosaic of everybody's mug pictures next week. Um, the, it was just so exciting getting the mug pictures into WhatsApp. I'm a very simple creature, and I tell you, um, it's great having all these ideas, but it's 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 better when you see that other people are happy to do them as well. <laughs> um, we got a great response, so that was that was really inspiring. So I'll throw a bit more green over here. very satisfying noise of somebody ripping something to shreds there. <laughs> so you'd be amazed how quickly you get in the flow. like you start drawing with the, the paper elements and again keep pasting them down 
My dog's having a dream here. Sorry. Elsa. You're okay. Now back to some brown paper. Um, I'd be interested to know who has furry friends in the room with them when they're, when they're making art. They'll get to know by the six weeks when it's art class and they, they get ready to come into the room for for art class. I like to crease the paper bag and scrunch it up so that uh, it'll add a bit of texture as well. I sometimes even scrunch up some of the magazine paper so it's not really flat. And I think that adds a nice little bit of drama, drama to the collage. And keep sticking the layer on the top, a little bit of varnishing. It can be drying away when um, we work on introducing a little bit of paint. And... You never have to have anything done in this session. Everybody works at a different speed. Some people are flyers and they're probably, they could be on a second collage. And that that's grand, but there's no, it, to say to the kids in school, it's not a race. You can do some of it, all of it. Or none of it. You might just be listening to us this evening. All, all of the above is valid. And I, I find as well, uh, certain times of the day, I'd have more energy for different work. Or if I wake up a little too early and I'm like, oh, I don't need the day to be this long, but I'll come down and I do some making for a while and then I'd, it would kind of, it'd feel restful, even if the body wasn't resting. In bed, like you probably should. So I think when, when you colour match things together, I haven't uh, used the browns and greens like this before, but you can even leave some of the white page peeping out if you want, if it's part of uh, your shape. Tearing up little, when you find little pieces, oh, that'll fit nice in there, a bit like a jigsaw. I'm as I'm coming down to the foreground or the front of my collage, I'm kind of tearing up bits to make little shapes that might suggest rocks, but not really. Hmm. So any of the pieces of paper that are overhanging my page, I'm just going to trim around. Find somewhere to stick them into the picture. And we kind of still have the heat on in here so that the glue is drying at an okay pace. Once it isn't too, too thick. PVA polyvinyl adhesive. It'll dry with a nice hard... Uh, shell on it. So it, it can be nice and durable. Uh, you find other kind of branded versions and you kind of, well, what's the big deal about that? Modge Podge. You'd be, it's an American product. But as far as I can see, it's just PVA glue. You get the same down in Woody's. We can be awful suckers <laughs> for a bit of branding. Um, you know, maybe some of it has glitter, but there's always glitter available in Euro shops or Mr. Price. You could make your own, throw glitter into it if you wanted. It mightn't be as smooth. I know um, I got a gift of a kit of different types of Mod Podge 
but sure it was no different than the PVA, so can't say now I'd be racing out to buy it. And the one that said it was outdoor was no more outdoor. Um, you could just use varnish that's probably already in your garage. Um, you just need to use the different brush if it was something that you wanted to paint outside. So be wary of gimmicky things. I think getting to know materials is one of the most powerful things um, that you can do to inform yourself with art. Um, now, I'm going to put these away so I don't get any glue on them. No family party will ever be the same again. You'd be robbing the napkins for yeah. your collaging. <laughs> I say, oh, I might take that one. That's good. So I'm going to let that dry a little bit. I have gaps in it, but I don't really mind. I might um, think about... Uh, I'll turn this around now. Um, it kind of looks a bit like a landscape. It's got tissue paper and magazines and brown paper and yeah looks grand i'm going to turn my page upside down so i'm looking at what essentially is the sky part of my page now where the gesso was and i'm just checking it with my fingers and it's nearly dry so i'm going to get my paints out and uh, i'm going to apply a little bit of paint and color up on the gesso area. So that'll involve me swapping my brushes. I'm going to use my flat head brush. And uh, my paint. Now any box of paint you get is going to be very dry because it hasn't been used before. So I'm going to use watercolour paint, slightly different to the product that you guys have, but same functionality. Now, because there's glue in my water, I'm going to take one minute to just change and swap out my water. Now, I'm just going to quickly check the chat box just to make sure uh, uh, nobody has any questions. If you have any ch uh, questions at all, throw them in there. You, something may have occurred to you when um, you were uh, when you were in the uh, when you were doing your exercise, you were like, oh, "What's that about?" Um, throw, throw, no question is a bad question. So throw whatever you want in there. I'm just going to dig out a pink brush. Now, there might be paints knocking around the house that nobody uses. Yeah. Borrow them. Anything can be used. I'd even say if there's a couple of tester pots you know, from when you're doing uh, interior, that contains acrylic paint and can be used. It might, it depends on the colour now, maybe you mightn't have, but um, I'll demonstrate on this as well. Let me see. This is watercolour paint too. And uh, actually, some of the paints they have in Lidl or Aldi can be great. These are kids' ones. They were three euro watercolour paint. Now, they're a bit chalky, a bit dry, but there's a great little selection of colour in them. Very dry. They would need to be hydrated to get them to activate into paint. Otherwise, you end up with what I would describe dirty water, <laughs> which is a sign that the brush hasn't agitated the paint enough. OK, so um, on my little camera there, I'm going to demonstrate my brush is going to do about 20 cycles of this piece, 
this little block of paint that just to wake up the pigment before anything goes on the page. You can throw a little drop of water into it and agitate that brush into the paint to wake it up. I'm just going to see if I have a corresponding slide for this. Um, what was I writing here? Did I skip one? No, we were on the clothesline. Yeah, so we started making a, a collage. You, I'm, we're not at this point yet, but you, like, you can arrange it on the page. When you're happy with it, glue it in place. Um, I'm going to throw a little bit of paint onto the top part of mine where the gesso was. So I'm going to put the paint down because it's watercolour. Right. across I I don't paint in stripes watch yourself if you're too stripy when you paint because it'll, it'll leave it a little bit artificial looking and I'm going to use the water to move it around then kind of like I was mopping the floor um, because I have a gesso up here It'll move around very easily. It's not absorbing into the paint too quickly, into the paper. So I'm going round and round just to spread this about the... Hopefully you can't hear my dog. Elsa! She's given herself a wash and uh, it's, a, it's a bit intense. <laughs> a lot of licking going on. <laughs> So I'm just moving a little bit of uh, light blue around here. And I'm using a sort of a swirling motion with my brush just to spread it about. <laughs> That's the dog, not me groaning it's uh, she's a golden retriever so uh she's very vocal <laughs> so the good thing about the gesso this watercolor i put down because the heat is on in my room that's dry already but because the gesso was underneath i can just take my wet brush and scrub it across the dry paint and it'll reactivate it and allow me to spread it around. So it makes it an awful lot more flexible than traditional, possibly uh, working on traditional watercolour, which is not forgiving at all. And I, I'm choosing to move my brush in a circular motion around the page because I think it speaks to the shape of clouds and um, the the volume that clouds create in the sky without them being kind of floating sheep <laughs> which would have been my clouds of my cartoon era and so I can see the texture of the gesso coming through I've put that wash down. I might go in a little heavier in places. Again, agitating that brush will will give me a little bit more colour. I think journaling is really all about freedom and self-expression. And you need to listen to, I would call the voice, your inner monologue when you work. If it's a judgy, 
critical in our in our voice, put a bit of manners on it. Because it's going to serve you no purpose at all. You know this, oh, geez, you can't draw a straight line. And, oh, that's terrible. That's messy. It looks like... Shut that down. Because if if that starts happening, you'll do nothing. And you won't allow yourself... Uh, this is about the process. The process of learning to make things it's not about making beautiful art, actually. Um, if that happens, bonus. If if you've enjoyed doing things with your hands, bonus. Uh, if you didn't realise that an hour and a half has gone playing about with stuff, bonus. But the last thing it should be is an ego massage where you're going, I just made the best piece of art ever. Get up. Get up the garden. That that won't last, unfortunately, in art. And it, it should be an honest, vulnerable space where you go, do you know what? That bit's interesting. Not so sure I like that bit, but I'll look at it with fresh eyes again tomorrow. Um, I'm just going to check the chat box, make sure there's any. Oh, Tig says woof. Yeah, that's for you, Elsa. <laughs> and uh, I'm... Let's see if I've anything else on my slides that I need to impart. Oh no. Yeah, no, we're on the right. We're on the right. Uh, yeah. So I talked about the the PVA varnish, and I've added, I suppose, a little recipe in there that you can use it like a varnish. Um, you could thin it out a little bit if it was a bit thick. Um, sometimes I would keep a, a container, a bit like the container that uh your glue came in, you know, like a sauce container for my watered down stuff or an old egg cup. And you could mix a little bit, 50-50, uh, a little bit, of a blob of glue and a blob of water and mix it together. And then that would give you a good varnish. Just wash the brush. Might add a little bit of a different colour in. Now, when these pages are dried, I could go over the the parts of it with my colouring pencils. If the page is wet, it could tear the page a little bit. So that's where I think the um the hair dryer comes in very handy. And uh, I ended up repurposing. Uh, I don't think it's ever been used to dry human hair. Um, a, a little travel hair dryer uh, down here, just because it sort of uh, helps helps me get through work a bit quicker, and I'm not. And a circular brush motion, like if you if you didn't have brushes at home, you, you might even find makeup brushes that aren't being used that have a, a good enough consistency um, for brushes, but the sponge is also a brush and that's good for filling in backgrounds as well. The other brushes that are in your little Taclon pack, they're the round brushes, very handy. And Taclon is the name for synthetic hair. Now, a brush is a bit of a, a mad thing. Essentially, it's a stick with hair on the end of it. So you need to be gentle with yourself when you not get the precision the first time that you use it. Because you do need to be quite hold it quite loosely. It's not a pencil. So a tight hand and a brush won't really work. You should think more Harry Potter and hold it like a wand and work from your shoulder and get movement as opposed to this tight pencil hand, uh, which which won't give you the results you want. Because if you want to use the little small brush to get your short strokes, you reduce the pressure a little bit and then let the hair do what it's good at, which is move, move across the page. I like to use my finger to blend as well, but you could also use cotton buds and different things. You'll find that you're our kit will contain all sorts of weird and wonderful things by the end of this six weeks. And another thing to kind of be aware of, if you think you're fiddling or footering at something, stop. 
because that could be a sign that you're overworking and the whole thing could change to a point of no return. And these are all kind of what I would call embodied experiences of making that we all experience because making something is like a roller coaster. We're very enthusiastic at the start. We're like, it's a bit like me in exercise. Yes, I'll do this and I'll do so many up and downs. And then I hit a point and it's like, oh, this isn't really working. And I start getting disheartened and I hear that negative inner part, inner voice and I have to be very careful because I could sabotage the whole thing. I'm going to leave this to dry for a little minute. I have uh, just added a couple of shades of blue on top of some shapes that are half like mountains, but I will leave leave that to dry now for a minute and rearrange my table a bit because I have everything everywhere. That's it. Time for a bit of tea. And I didn't do one brush dip into the tea tonight. <laughs> Hazards of the job. I have some brown paper left over. I'm going to put back into my envelope. So, yeah. We can. Uh, you could also include words at some point into this. I'm going to set you a bit of a homework challenge. Um, hopefully you've added some ripped or cut or torn paper. And the napkins that are in there, you might find that some of them had a white backing on them, but you can separate them out or not if you didn't want. Um, so that um, in my slide there, I had one with stars on it. I think that was left over from a party or a communion. And when I removed the white backing off it, I could layer it over the other pieces I'd collaged. And it nearly looked like it was see-through because the white uh, stuck down very well. So that was a nice surprise, a nice effect. So I would say if you fancy uh, something to dip into after this class, you could maybe pick some of your favorite song lyrics. And once your page is dry, your collage page is dry, you could cut the letters out of other papers or you could handwrite them. If the page is dry, you can work on top of it with the um, Posca pen, which is the pen in your in your pack I have one similar to it here or not the Posca pen it's a sharpie sharpie pen um, so you could work with your sharpie pen on top of it once that's had a chance to dry you could infill that lettering then with uh, some paint any kind of paint I did kind of say have a look around your house you might find tester pots acrylic anything will go Um. So I, I would love to see if you could incorporate some text either through collage or handwriting, maybe inspired by a poem or a uh, yeah, song lyric. And I would say prepare a few pages in your journal with Jesso. And they don't have to be in chronological order. They can be in any order. They can be textured or smooth and we can use them over the next few weeks. And it just means that we could have a session and you go, great, I can go to that. Here's one I prepared earlier, uh, Gesso pages. And um, yeah, it's handy. And they again, they, you can open the book randomly and throw them in. No problem. Um, I find that if you're in a creative space, it's good to feed yourself creatively, whether that's looking at programs or listening to something creative, even if it's a podcast um, or I like to listen if I'm working on my own, I listen to music. Um, but the Tate website is one of my favorite digital spaces to wander in just to kind of have a, a bit like Pinterest, Pinterest, have a wander. And you may set up a little folder if you had a Pinterest account on journaling to get inspiration and ideas and put them in. And that will all help feed into how your book 
how Mary's book is going to look different to Rena's book, to Ollie's book, so that it becomes a true expression of yourself and not kind of, you don't have to bang the drum the same way as everybody else. So um, I, that link, um, we'll, we'll share the content uh, in these little slide deck and you can you can access those links. You know, you might be having a cup of coffee at lunchtime and go, oh, I might have a look at that Tate Gallery website and see is there anything there. Or you could just go into Google and look at contemporary collage or collage art as a way of inspiring other pages. Um, and that's that's our content. But we do tend to work on for the next 20 minutes and chat if you want to chat or not or ask questions. But we'll be uh, all the material covered in today's class is available on the G Drive or through the recording. But if you have any questions, you can email me or WhatsApp me. Most of you have my number now. The thing that keeps me going is the photos. <laughs> so if you have done any work this evening, just whenever you think you're finished or whatever, just take a quick snap and send it on because that gives me a great indication of what worked, what didn't work. It's a form of feedback in itself. And um, yeah, I get ideas then for maybe next modules if I, if I see things that are coming through. So I'm going to stop the share. Hillary, you can stop the recording.